Hey, what's up everybody, and welcome back to the Sanctuary. I'm your host, Professor C, and I'll be taking us through another a &P study session. Specifically today, I'll be talking about anatomical position. So without any further business, let's get right to it. All right, in this lecture, we're going to take a quick look at anatomical position, anatomical terms, directional terms, regional terms. I bet that you know some of these just from living your normal life, but let's check it out. Whenever you hear someone say, put it in anatomical position, uh, and you want to make sure it's in anatomical position, make sure it's standing up tall, just like we have here in these three individuals. Make sure the face is forward, although it's quite hard to turn your face backwards, but make sure the face is not turned to the side, that it is forward. Palms forward, as you see here, important, important. Thumb should be pointed outward from the body. We're going to learn a word called lateral later. So the thumb is lateral. The thumb is lateral. The palms are forward. Okay, so feet slightly apart. Eh, you don't even see these fellers' feet down here, but I'll just draw in some little buttons here for his feet, but the feet aren't slightly apart. All right, so here we have a fellow in anatomical position and there's a lot of lines and sometimes this intimidates folks but let's just go through these one by one by one and you may be surprised that you know more than you think you know here uh, so let's just run through them and see what we can come up with so i'll give you the common term if there is one that's common to us in english and then i'll give you the formal term so up at the top we have a forehead this is frontal frontal. We have an eye, and it's not actually pointing to the eye. If it were pointing to the eye, you could say optic, a orbital. Orbital, that's the uh, eye socket. Uh, the eye itself could be optic. Or some other things too, we'll find out, but let's just go through this list here. The nose, nasal, okay. The mouth, might be pointing to the lips, but it's pointing to the mouth. Oral. And then the chin. Chin is kind of a strange one. It's referred to as mental. Mental. And that's, a, that's weird. We think mental meaning the mind. But think about somebody thinking about something very intently with their hand grabbing their chin. It used to be back in the day, if you grabbed your chin while you thought about things, uh, that you that was a sign of intelligence. And it is a pretty cool trick uh, to pause when you're thinking in a conversation. Grab your chin and look away for a moment, and it will make you momentarily look a little bit smarter. Okay, we have the neck. Cervical. A neck is a cervix, it's the word for neck. So anytime you have the neck or a narrowing of a structure, you may hear that term, cervical. Okay, the orange part up here and the purple part uh, are a little bit different. The orange part is called the thoracic area and the purple part is called the abdominopelvic area. And we're gonna get to those in a little bit. So, okay, the armpit area here, this would be axillary. Not auxiliary, a lot of people say that mistakenly, but it's axillary, referring to the axilla or the armpits. Next line's pointing, looks like to the chest. You could call that several different things, like pectoral, for instance. I'm gonna use the term mammary to refer to the chest, uh, just to to show you that you can use that for males as well. But there are other things you could call that too, thoracic, pectoral, as we'll see later. And then the midpoint of the chest there is where the sternum is, so we can call that sternal. Great. Okay, moving down to the purple. If it's right at the belly button, which this is pointing right at the belly button, the belly button 
you sometimes hear this word, umbi, umbil, umbilical, umbilical, the umbilical region. Under that, the, the purplish strip under that, I would probably just call that pelvic. And you could get away with calling the, uh, that umbilical region abdominal, right? Depending on which one is being asked of you. This one here is usually referred to as inguinal. Inguinal, inguinal, sometimes referred to as the groin. Although that could encompass all of the upper inner thigh sometimes to say inguinal and groin. And then the sexual organ would be genital. You may also hear the word pubic associated with structures around the reproductive organs. All right, flipping on the other side, I see a shoulder and I, I see it on the other guy too on the back here. So we can kind of share some of these lines if I, if I can make it work. So the shoulder, why not just call it shoulder? Well, it's not, it's called a chromial. It has to do with a part of the shoulder bone called the scapula that has a, an acromion that sticks out of it, that bony tip of your shoulder. If you grab your shoulder and push on the tip there, you can feel that bony part that's called the acromion. And so that region there is referred to as the acromial region. The arm, Brachii, brachia usually refers to the arm, so I'll put brachial, referring to the arm. And I can go down to the forearm here and here. And I can say for the forearm, we'll call it antibrachial. having to do with the forearm antibrachial. Now the elbow is a little different, so we're going to have to play a little bit different game here. <clears throat> if you're talking about the front of the elbow, the smooth front of the elbow, that's called antecubital. Antecubital. If you're talking about the bony back of the elbow, however, there's a different term here. It's called olecranal. Olecranal. So the front of the elbow is antecubital. The back bony part of the elbow is olecranal or olecranal, some people call it. We get here to the wrist. We can use the word carpal. Carpal referring to the wrist. You see a couple structures here that can be confusing. If this is pointing to the palm of the hand, we could call it palmer. And we could call the back of the hand, even though, again, it's really picky here, metacarpal metacarpal, the bony back of the hand. If we're talking about the thumb by itself, we could use the term pollux. And if we're talking about the fingers, they're known as the digits, so we could call them digital would be the word to go with that. Digital referring to having something to do with counting. You may have a digital clock, but it has no hands on it at all, but it keeps the time. It keeps, it counts things. It counts time. Okay, the hip area. Coxal, the hips are coxal. The big part of the leg is femoral. And we can combine that with this on the back side up here, femoral. The knee is going to be very similar to the, the elbow. On the elbow, we had an antecubital part was the smooth front part, and the olecranal part was the bony back part. Here, we're going to switch it, and the bony front part 
is patellar. And this is one most people are familiar with, patellar. Now the back part is called popliteal or popliteal, depending on how you pronounce it. Popples is a root word meaning ham, and that's where you would find, you know, hamstring muscles attaching. So the front of the knee is the patella, where you find the kneecap, the patella. The back of the knee that's smooth is referred to as the popliteal or popliteal. Okay, the leg, downtown leg, is often referred to as crural. And oftentimes this part here is called a leg and the part up here is referred to as the thigh. And you'll see that when we get more into the bones later, we'll make a distinction. We're trying to keep it as simple as possible. Now, if you're talking about the calf, which is what the next line is pointing to, uh, you would use a word sorrel to refer to the calf, that side too, sorrel. And then this one would be crural, the front part of the leg. All right, down at the bottom here, the ankle bones. There's no such thing as an ankle, but we pretend there is and we talk about it, but there's no actual anatomical structure known as an ankle. We call them tarsals, tarsal bones. The long part of the foot, very similarly to how we had carpals and metacarpals up in the hand, we have tarsals now and metatarsals. So this is the long bony part of the foot. Metatarsal, yes sir, there we go. Same thing at the bottom. You can talk about the big toe. If the thumb is the pollux, the big toe can be called hallux. And we're gonna have the same thing here. I'll just put a D for digital. You can call the toes the same as you call the fingers digits. All right, let's flip on the other side and get some of these that we've missed, if we can figure out a space to draw that. The heel is referred to as the calcaneus, so we'll put that as calcaneal. Calcaneal is the heel area. And then the sole of the foot, again, this guy's not quite in an anatomical position, I know. Let's not count off points on him for doing that, but he's letting us see the bottom of his foot, so this is called the plantar area. Let's think about planting your foot. And on the other side, we have a few more, the ears. There are a few things you can use for this as well. Otic, not optic, optic would be the eye, otic. You sometimes hear aural with an AU, but we'll keep it simple and just use otic so we don't get too confused. The back of the head, is known as the occipia. So the bone back here is the occipital bone. It's in the back of the head known as the occipital region. Neck, again, we've seen that. What was it called before? Cervical, what's it called here? It's still same thing, I'll just put a C dot and it's still cervical. All right, here in this area, you have this, again, you have your shoulder blade and it does have some extensions that go all the way over to the, to the actual tip of the shoulder, but we'll call this scapular. Again, the bone there is called the scapula. So let's put an R in the end and turn it into a descriptive word, scapular. The vertebrae running down the middle of the back here, of course. You could use vertebral is the way I say it. Some people pronounce it vertebral. Well, it's potato, potato, right? You say it how you need to to get it spelled correctly. The lower back where you put your hand for dancing, if they do that anymore. Lumbar area, the little triangle down there that you don't want to sit on or you could get some problems with pain in your legs and all kinds of other things is sacral. So don't sit on your sacrum. Instead, try to sit on your actual buttock, right? Your butt, which is a lot of muscle back there. And I refer to this as the gluteal area, of course, a word many, many people already know. So try not to sit on your sacrum, try to sit on your glutes. Try not to slouch down or you can cause some nerve problems. And this last thing, my, you may be wondering where it's pointing exactly. It's pointing in an area between the anus and the external genitalia. 
It's not clear that it's pointing there, but in most of the pictures, that's what it's pointing to. And this area is called the perineal area. Again, it's the area in between the anus and the external genitalia. Whew, that's a big slide there, guys. If you need to, watch it a couple of times. Try to pause it and fill in the blanks for yourself. Body planes. So this is a big deal. Um, when you need to look at anatomy, you need to cut it, cut things open, right? Organs, specimens, bodies, whatever you're trying to look at, you must cut. And then, of course, there are going to be some terms that describe some of these cuts. So oftentimes you do hear them call cuts or body planes, flat surfaces that we imagine along which bodies or structures are cut for anatomical study. Let's take them again. If you look at the picture, there's too much information there. So let's take them one by one by one. All right, a frontal, a coronal cut. Here's the frontal plane or the frontal cut. And you can see it's important to see what it's separating, right? It separates the front from the back. And so the word we use for front is anterior, although you could use ventral and the back is called posterior, or you could use the word dorsal. If you've ever seen, say, a shark in the water, and you saw that fin sticking up out of the back of the water, that's the dorsal fin. It's a way that I used to remember which way back meant. Ventral, anterior, the front of body. Ventral refers to the belly, the venter. Okay, so the frontal plane also known as a coronal plane or a coronal cut, and you can see that right here, separates front from back or separates anterior from posterior. You could also say separates ventral from dorsal. All right, let me change my ink up to a different color. And let's look at the transverse. This one's really easy because imagine you have a person and you're going to do the magic trick, saw the person in half and you cut them right there, right? That's a transverse cut. It's also known as a horizontal cut for that reason, because we're cutting right across just like the saw the lady in half in the magic box trick. So <clears throat> the transverse cut right there. Again, what is it separating? That's the way to really remember uh, on exams and so forth. It separates up from down. All right, it separates up from down, but we're not going to call it up and down. We call up superior, and we'll call down inferior. All right, so the transverse cut, horizontal cut, transverse plane, separates superior from inferior, up from down. Let me change colors one more time, and we'll look at this third cut, known as a sagittal cut, sagittal. The sagittal plane separates left from right. It goes kind of right down like that, separating left from right. And that's exactly what we call it. But remember, this is tricky to remember. The right side is the opposite of what you think because we're looking at a person and we're looking at their right. And so the left will be on your right. So it does get confusing, especially when you're trying to name structures and your brain doesn't want to turn it around, but you have to. So the sagittal plane separates left from right. Now there are a couple of extra terms when you get to some of these and sagittal is very commonly uh, gotten into more. What I've drawn here or what's on this picture is called mid sagittal. It's right exactly in the midline between left and right, right? It's perfectly symmetrical where the left side is a mirror image of the right side. That's mid sagittal. If I wanted to cut it off the midline, that would be called parasagittal. It would be off the midline. So if I could draw something like this, let me draw a person's beautiful face. It's about as beautiful as it gets right now. If I wanted to do a mid-sagittal cut, I could cut right down the middle, separating left from right. I can cut here also, separating left from right, but it's not symmetrical. So that would be a parasagittal cut. And the only one we have to be worried about here, and it's not a big worry, is what if you cut like this, like a diagonal cut. Anything diagonal 
usually has the term oblique with it. So when you hear the word oblique, immediately think about diagonal. Okay, some other directional terms. No, this fella, I know, he's not quite in an anatomical position, but we'll forgive him right now. Medial versus lateral. So here's the trick. On medial or lateral, just make, pretend there's a line going down the middle of the body, just like a mid-sagittal cut. If you have a structure here versus a structure over here, you would say that this structure is medial to the other one. It's more near the middle. And you would say this structure is lateral compared to the other one because it's further away from the midline. Another way to think of lateral is on the side of something. It's, it's, it's lateral. It's pointing away from the midline. Medial is toward the midline. Okay, and we can do a weird example of that if you want to try one. Let's draw like a weird alien guy. There we go. And we can draw his other hand too if you want to, but let's say there's some weird alien guy and we're trying to talk about his anatomical parts. Let's say he's got three fingers on a hand, right? And we want to name these fingers. Well, you could, you know, let's, let's call them... Fubs. Let's call them fubs. How about that? He's got three fubs on this hand. Remember, if we're going to play the medial lateral game, we'd put a line down the middle. And if I were doing this, I'd call this finger the medial fub, right? That's the medial fub because it's the fub of the finger closest to the middle. The one farthest away with that dot would be the lateral fub, right? Or the lateral finger. It's furthest away from the midline. And then sometimes if you do have a, 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 a setup where you've got three of something and you have one that's closest, one that's farthest, and one that's in the middle, sometimes you'll hear the term intermediate. And so this would be called the intermediate fub or finger. Okay, so there's medial and lateral. Medial is closer to the midline. Lateral is on the side further away from the midline. And intermediate is somewhere in between medial and lateral. Proximal versus distal. Think of some English words that you know. Approximate. Approximately. It's, it's something about getting near or getting close. While distal would be distant, getting far. And the way to do these is to write some phrase like this. The blank. And let's just pick something. The wrist is blank to the, and you got to have something else. So let's pick elbow. And you could put in fancy anatomical terms here. You could put the carpals or so-and-so, but let's just keep it simple. The wrist is blank to the elbow. Well, when compared to the head, and that's what you have to do is have some sort of frame of reference here. When compared to the head, the wrist is actually further away from the head than the elbow is, right? So we could say the wrist is distal to the elbow. It's further away from the head than the elbow is. We could flip it around and say the elbow is proximal to the wrist. See how that makes sense? So you have to have a frame of reference, either the head or the midline of the body, and you're saying which term is further away. You could say, hey, when you look at the femoral, right, versus the sural region, the sural region is distal to the femoral region. Or you could say the femoral region is proximal to the sural region. All right, a couple more terms here. Superficial. Most of the people know this term. If someone described your friend as, you know, she's superficial. You, you, you know what that means. Only skin deep. You know what I mean? So external. Something that's on the outside. And you say, well, we just talked about something that's on the outside, lateral and... Think about it being in layers. So what you have to see in an image like this on the side is you see a layer and a layer and another layer and another layer and another layer and then a layer on the bottom. If you can picture those layers, you can do this very easily. Something that's higher up, right? More toward the outside, we say, would be more superficial. So anything up here where I'm scribbling my pen 
would be more superficial to anything down here where I'm scribbling my pen, right? Those down here at the bottom, those would be deeper layers, deep or more internal layers. So superficial referring to something near the surface, deep implying underneath that. This is very good when you're talking about things that are existing in layers, like layers of the skin, as in this picture, or say muscles that lay on top of one another that are sometimes hard to talk about. And you have to say, no, go to the muscle deeper than the one you're at. Go underneath it. As usual, if you enjoyed watching the video, come back and check out more. I appreciate you watching. Bye-bye.